This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenholm from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. I'm joined today by Harold Vian, who is VP of Products and Marketing at the company Baffle. Thank you for joining me today. Oh, good to be here. Awesome. I'm excited to learn more about Baffle, so let's get started. So sure, sure. tell me more about what the company does. What would the elevator pitch for Baffle be? So I, I think that the, well, the elevator pitch for the company is basically if you believe that your environment is compromised, which most, you know, security practitioners today do, we make it a lot harder for people to steal data and high value data in high value asset stores. So the, the company has an advanced protection scheme that basically uh, protects data using um, AES standard encryption, but still allows for computation and analysis to occur on the uh, encrypted data without ever requiring any changes to the application. So it's completely invisible to the users, to the application, but it protects the data from actually being stolen from uh, a backend database tier. Very nice, okay. And now I'm just curious, uh, how has the threat landscape changed over the past few years in your opinion? What do you think about it? Well, I mean, I think that there are, uh, obviously, you know, we, we always say another day, another breach here, right? And so, <laughs> yeah. uh, it just seems to be that that trend is uh, continuing. The, the monetary return on stolen data uh, continues to rise, particularly in specific uh, industries and data types. And so, uh, you know, we, we don't think that the attacks are going to diminish in any form or fashion. So I think that the, the landscape has shifted in terms of um, there's a lot more uh, sharing of attacks. There's a lot more mm. day zeros that seem to be getting un, uh, uncovered over time. And so... I don't think that any organization can ever really successfully fully fortify against any of those. And so the, the strategies to counter that have really changed in terms of how fast can you identify, how fast can you contain, and what are other mitigation measures or preventative measures that you can take given that you have started to move to accept the fact that you do have attackers in your, in your network. And so I think the landscape has shifted in that. Um, you're kind of defending from the inside more than, mm. than you were traditionally with, uh, you know, a, a, a historical kind of perimeter outside in infrastructure. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you, especially with the sharing of attacks lately. It's been a lot more than usual. Sure. Now, yeah. speaking of organizations, I'm wondering with so many organizations under attack, what do you see as their biggest concern and what are some ways that they should be defending themselves? Yeah, I mean, I think that the organizations, there's always, you know, I hear from a lot of uh customers and CISOs that they've got to tackle the basics. I mean, that's mm -hmm. one thing that we still see organizations struggling with. But I also think that there's a lot of uh, alternative approaches, alternative approaches that people should be considering in terms of, A, what is the highest value of data that you're trying to protect against uh, or trying to protect for your organization? Really looking at this from a risk-based perspective as well, uh, making sure that you're putting your, your cyber investments in the right place. Uh, and also looking at different ways that people can um, be more nimble in the face of an active attack or mm -hmm. potential attack, uh, whether that's, you know, immutable infrastructure, the ability to basically shoot an instance in the head and, and respin it up or utilizing more ephemeral based technologies to kind of move the workload around, uh, as well as even, you know, micro segmentation or different types mm -hmm. of architecture on that front. Um, obviously, and, you know, being from our company, we believe that there's a different way to protect data fundamentally without breaking applications and uh, effectively still allowing the processing to occur while securing it. Yeah, very nice. And now I'm wondering what differentiates your data encryption solution from other ones available on the market? So, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of differentiators. I mean, first and foremost, we don't use any modified encryption schemes. So it's industry standard AES. There's a lot of players out there that are nice. claiming things around homomorphic or different types of uh, format preserving encryption schemes that have a uh, lower entropy. Um, we don't require any uh, modifications to the application. So we're very easy to work with virtually any application on the market. We can work with commercial applications where we don't even have um, access to any of the, the source code. There's no huh. app modification required. 
uh, it doesn't break any of the application functionality. So this company is the first company to prove out wildcard search on AES encrypted data. So if I did a search like Star Herald or Star Marley, and that was actually in the description of uh, an application or somewhere in loose text, we would actually find it without ever actually exposing the underlying data in the clear. And so that's kind of the, wow. the magic of the tech is that we can still deliver strong encryption, minimize on uh, the risk around data theft, but also don't require any changes to the apps or break the apps in any form or function. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. You know, I know you kind of touched on this briefly, but I'm wondering as attackers become more sophisticated and develop all these new techniques, how does your team stay ahead of these advancing threats? You know, I, I, I was thinking about that question a lot and I, I don't know if there's really a great answer. I, I, think that, um, I think that the hackers have been ahead of us for quite a while. I think, uh, again, they, they share information better than the security community does in general. <laughs> Um, I think that, uh, you know, it's difficult to say that you're ever going to really stay ahead. I think that, again, what, what we do really well is hackers are going to get in. Hackers are going to get in and they're going to move across your network. They're going to find ways to move laterally. They're going to find ways to uh, get access to your data stores. If that is going to occur, which it will, we make it a lot harder to actually make use of the information that they, mm. that they steal. And so I think that that's kind of how we quote unquote stay ahead of the hackers, but in reality, what we're just trying to do is um, introduce a different defense mechanism given that you accept the fact that they're gonna get in. Yeah, absolutely. Assume they're gonna get in because they probably will. Yeah. yeah. And now I know that your team is still fairly young, but you guys are already receiving awards. Can you talk about the value you see in those accolades? Yeah, I mean, it's great to be recognized. I mean, we were uh, RSA Sandbox Innovation Finalist last year. Nice. Um, I think that we've, um, you know, won a, a number of different accolades. It's good that people really see the innovation and the technology. Uh, it's definitely a different approach. We've been told by, you know, multiple um, folks that other people that are kind of using similar types of technological approaches are really looking at it in terms of a kind of a niche or specialized use case. We've taken a very general um, functional approach across a, a broad set of uh, data protection needs that we think we address pretty pretty fully. And so that's been the feedback from both the, the awards people who look at the solution as well as potential customers who say, you know, you're the, you're the only player that's really looking at this from a, uh, a broad scale data protection scheme. So uh, I think it's, it's good, it's exciting. It's exciting times for us. Nice, that's awesome. And now speaking of customers, I was wondering what kind of companies are adopting your solution? Yeah, I mean, t we see a lot of uh, interest, obviously, from financial services uh, and healthcare. Those have been mm. kind of sweet spots for us um, with GDPR looming. A lot of people in uh, Europe, uh, especially European financial services, are particularly interested. Um, we deliver very effectively in terms of the technical controls for access around um, data privacy for GDPR requirements, given that we don't expose data in memory, in use, in the runtime, or in the search index. And so I think that that's a pretty good control that we enable um, for organizations that are trying to comply with that regulation. Uh, so those are the kind of the sweet spots, but it's pretty much, you know, anybody who has high value data mm -hmm. that they, they ultimately want to protect. And, and so that's kind of, um, you know, where we're, we're seeing most of the interest, but it does tend to gravitate to healthcare, which has been under attack as an industry and financial services. So. Okay. And do you guys need to adjust your uh, services based on an organization size or scale? Um, you know, we are scale up. We, you know, a lot of the, what we've implemented from an architecture perspective is um, uh, it's a linear scaling model as mm. well as leveraging a lot of uh, um, stateless servlet um, based technology in terms of how we're handling data. Uh, data workload and so it doesn't need to necessarily change based on industry per se but and I, I think that's the value is that we're very easy to shim in on virtually any application uh, and so that's common across any industry we don't really have to do anything specific um, for for any particular vertical per se okay yeah. very nice yeah. now uh, lastly what developments can we expect to see down the line from your team so I think that what we We've done a great job of is really uh, building out this advanced data protection model. And really as part of that, I think the next step for us is not only allowing us to protect the data via encryption and allowing processing on it, but also gating what users or what applications can actually decrypt any particular piece of data. And so there's a, a lot that we're doing around access control. And if we really look at you know, how people are stealing data or misusing data or violating privacy, really then the question becomes, well, how can you better kind of control the access point to see who can actually 
see the data in the clear ever. And so that's kind of the the, the next question that we're, we're looking to address on the roadmap. Very cool. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to that from you guys. Harold, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you. Absolutely. You too. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.